So I'm just sitting down trying to work out uh, to put basically a spreadsheet together for my solar kind of payback calculator. And so obviously I'm just making sure I properly understand the UK feed-in tariff process. So I thought I would kind of share that with you so that you know too, if you're thinking about getting solar and what that means right now. The short version is right now, so we're in September, September 14th, 2018. And in the UK, it seems like the government is getting very close to abolishing this whole feed-in tariff thing. So we'll talk a little bit about those numbers specifically in a moment, but come April 2019, the current feeling in the industry is that they will stop doing the feed-in tariff. What happens after that? is anyone's guess but to kind of provide some perspective kind of seven years ago so in 2011 the feed-in tariffs were around like 43 pence per kilowatt and over time they have slowly been decreasing further and further and further which in some cases obviously makes it less appealing for people um, to adopt solar. But as I said in some of the other videos, uh, I'm not doing solar because I want to get um, any money uh, from the government. I am doing solar because I want to be self-sustainable and I think that I'm better cover all my electricity costs over the year. So but obviously any, any feeding tariff I can get is a bonus and helps with the payback. So let's look at where things are. So right now, as things stand, if your solar system that's MCS accredited, uh, MCS accredited, so it's important that the components that you have and the installer is uh, MCS accredited, that then means that your, your system uh, and the components meet the requirements of this you know, government requirement. You also have an EPC rating, so that's an energy efficiency rating of your home of uh, level D or above. They're the kind of two main things that you have to have. Then at the time that you um, have this your solar installation installed and approved and you get that certificate, then you choose who is going to be um, the person you submit your fit numbers two to get the payments from. I think a lot of people believe or feel that this has to be your current energy provider. It doesn't, you can go with anyone. So myself, I'm going with good energy. And really one of the reasons for that is at the time of having the solar installed, I was with Eon in the UK and I'm moving to outfox the market. And I don't believe they allow or they support the feeding tariffs right now. So you can go with anyone out of good energy for two reasons. One recommended to me by other people that are using them. Thanks, Ed. And also it's all it's all done from an app. So it makes it, things a little bit easier as well. So that's kind of the things that you need to have happening. So you can't just get solar and get fit payments. There's a few things that you kind of need to be doing. Um, so that's that's important. And then there's different rates. Um, so there's a higher, middle and lower tariff and that depends on obviously, as we mentioned before, uh, the rating of your house, etc. So the higher EP, so if, for the higher tariff, you have an EPC rating of level D or above and the commissioning uh, date of the installation doesn't have more than 25 or more installations. So this is because remember, Back when the fit thing kind of first started off and you were getting like 40-odd pence per kilowatt, many companies set up and, and would pay for the solar installation on your roof and, and you would get free electricity from there, but these other people would get the fit payment. So obviously they're trying to manage, um, uh, I guess, how that system can be abused potentially. Um, and back when this kind of first started, those 43 pence per kilowatt rates 
were kind of locked in for 25 years. So if back in 2011 you had your solar install done, that 43 pence per kilowatt is locked in now for you know 25 years from that date and you're kind of laughing. Whereas now they've reduced the rate significantly and you're only locked in for 20 years. But if like me, you're a standard homeowner, you've, you've got your solar install done, you are most likely going to be in the higher tariff. So these are the numbers I'm going to reference here. So um, the other thing to keep in mind is the, the capacity of your solar install. So there are ratings between 0 to 10 kilowatts. Uh, remember mine is a 9 kilowatt system with a maximum um, push back into the grid of 6 kilowatts. There's a 10 to 50 and a 50 to 250. So again, uh, I'll probably put a link uh, in the description to the Offgem website where you can come and look at these tariffs yourself. But I'm going to talk about all of this as in my solution, which is that again, that nine kilowatt array with a six kilowatt inverter. And that's the six kilowatt is what I'm approved for um, by my uh, DNO that I have. So standard solar photovoltaic receiving the higher rate somewhere between 0 to 10 kilowatts i get a massive 3.93 kilowatts 3.93 pence per kilowatt sorry so like 40p less <laughs> pretty much than you got like seven years ago but to be honest a lot of this stuff is kind of trade-off so if you looked at this kind of back in 2011 this kind of solar system would have cost significantly more than I've paid. So I do think it kind of, it all kind of works itself out, but that is, um, again, the higher rate. So that's, um, the feed in rate. And then there is also a, an export rate. So the export rates right now is 5.24 pence per kilowatt. Um, both of these numbers are supposed to be, uh, index linked so they should r rise and adjust with inflation so that isn't a, a fully static number for those 20 years there will be some um, variance in it so what do these numbers mean so as with most things uh, things can get complicated so what the government has done in this country is trying to make things as simple as possible or at least minimize the amount of effort that's happening i guess on the energy provider and government side so how this works you each day your house is generating electricity from the solar you are going to submit these fit meter readings um once every excuse me once every quarter so this would be the little you know you've got this little export meter somewhere in your installation anyway it's clocking up the numbers since the, the day you had this installed and you get paid the feed-in tariff for a hundred percent of the electricity that you generate so just to keep things simple if you generate 40 kilowatt hours in that in a day you are going to get paid for those 40 kilowatts that you generated so again going back to our spreadsheet so you generated 40 kilowatts in a day and you will get paid 3.93 pence for each of those 40 kilowatts that you generated okay makes sense now most people um obviously are out at work during the day uh, i'm here at home working so consuming electricity but that isn't the norm so typically the government kind of estimate that you will utilize 30% of the energy that you generate. So obviously you are saving on your electricity bill there because remember you're getting paid for everything that you generated. The stuff that you generated and used, you're not having to pull from the grid. So you're not paying that on your electricity bill. But there is an assumption that typically 70% of what you generated will go back into the grid every surplus something that you couldn't do anything with so to try and kind of keep things simple what they've basically said is they will pay you the export rate so that um, 5.24 pence per kilowatt of 50 percent of everything you've generated so again just 
bear with me, we just go a bit, you know, again, a bit more simple, simple numbers. So it, a day happens, you generate 40 kilowatts of electricity, you're gonna be paid 3.93% um, of that electricity, 3.93 oh, 3 pence per kilowatt of that 40 kilowatts you generated. Let's say, just to hopefully emphasize this example a bit more, let's say those 40 kilowatts, you used 30 kilowatts of it, right? So you've basically got 10 that you put back into the grid. So those 30 kilowatts that you used are 30 kilowatts you didn't have to pull from your energy provider. So you're not paying for 30 kilowatts that day. And people's average price per kilowatt that they pay their energy provider is around 15 pence per kilowatt. So, just to kind of subtotal it right now, we've got 40 kilowatts at 3.93 pence per kilowatt. So that's in our bank. We've then got 15 pence per kilowatt of the 30 kilowatts we've used. That goes in our little bank as well, of some we've not had to pay. And even though we've used 30 kilowatts, but we generated 40, there's that assumption that we would have given 20 back. We would have given half of it back. And so we will get paid 5.24 pence on 20 kilowatts as well. So again, just to summarize, I'll try and put a little diagram or something here to explain again, just how this works. You generate 100% of electricity, you get paid your feed-in tariff rate for all of your generation. Anything you're using is saving you having to pay on your bill. So no one's giving you any of that money, you're just not spending it. And then regardless of whether you consume all of what you generated or give it all back to the grid, you're gonna get 50% of, of what you've generated as an export number, which is at 5.24 pence per kilowatt. And this is why it makes even more sense to, whilst this feed-in tariff thing still exists, to utilize as much electricity as you can. So this is why it makes so much sense to have the ability to heat your water with electricity from your solar, to put it in a battery that you can use later, because if you use it all or you use none of it, you're only gonna get the 50% of it. So I understand why they've done it. I do think it's a little bit crazy, but it benefits um, those of us that are generating uh, our own electricity. So just to give an example, so again, this is only my kind of third third week or fourth week, I think this is week, this is week three, End of the, I think this is week three of having solar. So I've only got a couple of stats here and, and so I, ha I can't, I haven't quite sat down yet and worked out what I think my estimated payback is based on real numbers because I don't have enough data yet. But for August, and so I think I only had solar for like six days in August, something like that, five or six days in August. So just so you can see how these numbers work in practice. So I generated 190.93 kilowatts in August. So again, I'm still waiting for my fit stuff to come through. It takes about 28 days from when you submit your application. You want to do that as soon as possible. So once you get your MCS certificate, submit this. So I would fill out my paperwork and say, right, I've generated 193 kilowatts. I'm going to be paid that um, 3.93 pence or whatever it is for all of that. And then they are going to obviously pay me for half of that. So um, 190, 50, 95, and it's on that. Is it? Yeah, 95 kilowatts. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, so the way my maths works out is I generated 190.93 kilowatts. I'm getting the 3.93 pence for that. I used 88.66 kilowatts. Uh, on my current tariff, I'm paying around 12 pence per kilowatt. So that's 88, oh, 12, 12 pence times 88.66 kilowatts I haven't had to pay for. So that's money in the bank. And 
with the feed-in tariff which being the 5.24 pence that I'm going to get back the money there so what this really equates to and really all we care about is, is the money right so for those six days or wherever it is I'm going to get paid £7.50 for the electricity I generated I'm going to get £5 for the 50% that could potentially be exported even though it wasn't and then because I used 88.66 kilowatts I didn't have to pay for electricity for that's a saving that of £10.76 I wouldn't have to have paid so in those six days basically I'm £23.27 better off or really in real terms I've got £23.27 as part of my paying back for this solar installation that I've got so I understand why people are confused because even though I'm saying it now it does seem a little bit confusing uh, but really it is quite straightforward again just to summarize and finish this video up you get paid that lower fit rate for a hundred percent of what you generate regardless of how much you use or not you will get paid the export rate which is a different number for half of what you've generated so they're the two things that how you're getting money in but obviously the more electricity you use yourself is money you're saving on paying your electricity provider so that's money that you get to keep in your pocket so i hope that was helpful i hope this helps you understand a little bit more about fit if this is still something you're considering with solar um, the rates basically continue to go down so just looking on what i have here so as we move into October, uh, so for the last quarter of the year, October to December, the rate falls from 3.93 to 3.86. And then the first quarter of 2019, so January to end of March, it drops from 3.86 to 3.79. And then we end up in this no man's land where nobody really knows what's going on right now because I think the government's too busy trying to work out what's happening with Brexit. But I think the biggest push is you know pushing people to get batteries because it makes more sense to kind of harvest and hold and use this yourself so there we have it uh, any questions any comments any feedback uh, please leave leave them below give us a thumbs up if you've liked it if you didn't like it tell me why so i can improve and uh yeah that's uh the feeding tariffs in the uk thanks for watching this video a thumbs up would be really appreciated if you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.